Welcome back. And with Psalm 53 before us, we have a almost a repeat of Psalm 14, but there are a few differences. David wrote both of them, and it appears that in Psalm 53, uh, he has simply updated it, uh, whereas in Psalm 14, he talks in the uh, last portion of the psalm about, uh, generally speaking, God's help for the righteous. Here in Psalm 53, he seems to be referring to maybe a little more specific incident in his life, uh, but we don't know what exactly that incident is. There are a couple that might fit the bill. But either way, uh, a lot of the thoughts that uh, we had on Psalm 14, or we, that I shared with you on Psalm 14, you can just go back to Psalm 14 and look at. I'll just read this. Uh, obviously, I already noted the one main difference that you'll see in verse 5. Uh, one other difference is that in Psalm 14, David had a preference for using the Lord as the name uh, that he would refer to God with. Here, he just uses the name God. Uh, as his preference there. Uh, so just a couple minor differences, but the same basic thought is uh, obviously prevalent in this psalm. Uh, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Uh, no matter how smart you are, uh, when you say that there is no God, the Bible only has one description of you, uh, a fool because it's foolish uh, just to theoretically say that there's no God, uh, and twice as foolish, perhaps, we might say, uh, to live as if there is no God. But let's just hear Psalm 53, and maybe I'll have one more closing remark before we move on. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, and their ways are vile. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. Everyone has turned away. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Will the evildoers never learn, those who devour my people as men eat bread, and who do not call on God? There they were, overwhelmed with dread, where there was nothing to dread. God scattered the bones of those who attacked you. You put them to shame, for God despised them. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion, when God restores the fortunes of his people. Let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. And just the closing thought that I had in verse 5, there they were overwhelmed with dread where there was nothing to dread. Uh, it reminded me of, you know, elsewhere in Scripture where, you know, if God is for us, who can be against us? There's nothing to fear. Uh, kind of gives the reverse of that. Uh, if you reject God and reject even his existence uh, and try to deny that, well, then there's obviously room to be afraid of any and everything, even when there is nothing to be afraid of. Uh, so again, uh, if you want to hear more of my thoughts on similar subject matter, Psalm 14 would be the place to find it. That's all I have for you for Psalm 53. See you again, hopefully, for Psalm 54.